Hey everyone, welcome back. I got a real fun one today. Uh, we're going to be looking at the response of a capacitor when it's subjected to a DC or a direct current voltage. Now there's two main types of voltage, direct current, which is what you get out of a battery or a DC power supply, and then AC, which means alternating. Most of the time we relate that to what you get out of a wall outlet, but there's lots of things that generate AC, alternating types of voltages. Audio signals are a big one, and capacitors are really interesting when you subject them to AC voltages, but with DC, the results are very predictable and very systematic. So we're going to take a look at that using, again, the LED circuit. Visuals make a really good way to learn. Uh, but a couple of real basic things to understand first. When you subject a capacitor to a direct current voltage for a very short time, it's going to let through a lot of current as the charge begins building up on both sides of the capacitor. And then over time, that charge is going to build up and current will stop flowing. So at first, we're going to see a lot of current and then it's slowly going to turn off. The speed is determined by a resistor that's paired along with the capacitor, effectively limiting how much current is filling it. I like to think about it like a bucket. You can fill a bucket with a small trickle of water and it's gonna take a very long time to fill. You can fill it with a fire hose and it'll be very quick. The resistor is kind of like the size of the hose, how much water is filling the bucket or how fast. Now the size of the bucket is also going to determine how long it takes to fill the bucket. So those two elements, the capacitance of the capacitor and the resistance of the resistor along with it, those together determine the speed at which the capacitor is going to charge. They call that a time constant. The time constant is the multiplication of the resistance value times the capacitance value. Now in this experiment, I've used a large value of both, probably larger than most of the values you're going to see when in an RC circuit normally, but this should be able to allow us to visually see the current decreasing through the LED, or the LED is going to become dimmer over time as the capacitor charges. So let's take a look at the pairing of the resistor and the capacitor and watch as the, uh, as the LED decreases brightness over time. And we're also going to take a look at the current and voltage of the capacitor during that time. So here I have a couple of multimeters connected to the circuit. We're viewing our voltage. The charge on the capacitor is on the left multimeter and the current through the circuit is shown on the right multimeter. Now this circuit is a power supply at this end, which I'll be turning on and off to apply the voltage, a resistor to limit the current through the circuit, charging the capacitor. It's a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor, like I said, and then the capacitor itself, a 1000 microfarad capacitor. And then that goes through the LED, which I've moved off to the side of the circuit, just so we can see it against a dark background and see the contrast a little bit better. And then that returns back to the negative side of the power supply. Now up here, a little bit hidden, but important but not really critical to the operation of what I'm trying to show today is a push button where when I press it we can discharge the capacitor. Uh, you're also going to see a little bit of discharge when I turn the power supply off. There's a little bit of current leaking back through this power supply since it has solid state components. So when we apply the charge we're going to see the voltage on the capacitor start increasing as it develops a charge. Once I turn it back off we'll see the charge going away. Now in, a, in a, some capacitive circuits, if there is no extra path given, the charge on that capacitor is going to stay around for a very long time unless we give it a discharge path. That's a warning to working with big capacitors because if they hold that charge for a long time, uh, if you're poking around with capacitors, you can be seriously injured by those things. So you need to be really careful. Let's take a look at this LED when I turn the voltage supply on. And sure enough, you can see the LED's voltage dropping away. Now I'll turn it back off and press this button to discharge the capacitor, and then we'll turn our attention to the multimeter and actually get an idea of what's really happening with the numbers in this circuit. Watching the LED's charge, that's fun, uh, but actually seeing what's going on behind the scenes is a really important part of electronics. So right now, I see no voltage on the capacitor. That means that the capacitor is completely drained. I also see, and this is in microamps, by the way, so very tiny amount, four tenths of a microamp of current. So basically at this point, we can say that we have nothing going on in the circuit except maybe a little bit of leakage from the power supply itself, uh, but there's still going to be a little bit of drain through the capacitor as well. Now, when I turn the power supply on, let's watch the voltage develop over here. The voltage will start at zero, which means the capacitor isn't charged at first, 
And then the charge is going to build up. And as that charge is increasing on the capacitor, the current is dropping. As the current drops, we would kind of expect the LED's brightness to go down, and that's exactly what happened. The LED's brightness went down, and the DC voltage will continue to charge. And I've got this set to a 5-volt supply. It's going to charge until the capacitor reaches about 5 volts. That's going to get slower and slower the closer it gets to fully charged. And it's getting closer to the 5 volts, and we'll expect it to continue slowing down more and more and more. Now I'm going to turn this power supply off. As it discharges, the voltage on the capacitor begins going away. It's discharging back through the power supply circuit. And you can see that the current that the capacitor was supplying jumped up a little bit. But then as the capacitor's voltage begins to die down, so does the current discharging it. I'm going to help it out here a little bit. Let's get it to drop this voltage a little bit faster by pressing the button. It's a much lower resistance path through here, so it'll discharge way faster. So one more time, watch the current over here at this time. See how at the very beginning that current was dropping really fast and then begins dropping slower and slower and slower. That's what a capacitor does in DC voltage. At first, it charges very, very quickly, so there's a lot of current going through it. But then as it begins to get closer to fully charged, the amount of current charging it begins to go away, decreasing. And we say the same thing about the voltage. As the voltage, the faster the voltage is changing, the more current must be going into it. Now the change, the change in voltage is very small. And the current that's charging it, leading to that change in voltage, is also very small. So that means that the resistance of the capacitor must have been changing over time as the voltage developed. That's going to be really important when we come back to AC when the voltage charging it is always changing. Here we apply the voltage and then nothing changes after that. Now I'm going to take out the resistor that was used to charge the capacitor. Basically what that's going to do is break the path for charging and discharging and I'm going to turn off the power supply. Look at that voltage. pretty much just sitting there. It is dropping a little bit because there's actually a little bit of current going through the meter itself, but not nearly as fast as it was when that discharge path was back through the power supply circuit. Press the button again, help it out, and watch that voltage drop. A few uh, non-advised ways to discharge capacitors are by using like a, like a screwdriver across the lead, some capacitors. Like this one, uh, this is, even here, is only a little bit larger in capacitance. It's about 4,000 microfarads. This is 1,000. So actually, this capacitor, although it's huge, really isn't that much more capacity. Uh, but there's some that are in the tens or hundreds of thousands of microfarads. Uh, and those capacitors can discharge so much energy over a very short time that if you touch a screwdriver between these two terminals, it can arc across and actually weld those two things together, kind of like dropping a wrench across a car battery. So don't ever do that. Sometimes you'll see a resistor that's screwed in between those two terminals, and a resistor will allow it over time, if the supply voltage is removed over a long period of time, it'll discharge. And then basically if you've found something that's sit been sitting around on a shelf for a few months, you can pretty much be sure that it's discharged. But a really good way to tell, use that voltmeter. Use a voltmeter to check across the two terminals and make sure that the voltage stored on it is nothing. Uh, that way you know it's safe. So again, this really is just the scratching the surface on these capacitors. But fortunately, in DC circuits, their operation is fairly simple. The amount of voltage that we supply to the capacitor can also make a big difference. Here I was limiting it to 5 volts. But you remember back from the capacitor video that when it was subjected to too much voltage, the thing exploded. So they can be really violent when used improperly. So we just make sure that the charging voltage is less than the maximum voltage rating of the capacitor, uh, and then life should be good. The bigger the value of the capacitor, the slower it's going to take to charge. So we can use that to our advantage in these visual kinds of circuits. But if we want really precise timing, uh, which is often the case in DC circuits for solid state electronics, timers, and things like that, those resistors and capacitors when used together can be fine-tuned adjusted to get you really precise measurements of time. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed this video. There's a lot more behind capacitors. We're just getting started, and there's going to be a lot more to come. Thanks for watching.